synthetic biology is uh, harnessing uh, biological based systems to do useful things and it falls under two categories either rebuilding natural systems using defined systems in order to learn something about how the natural system works or building up new systems from parts in order to create a function that has some sort of utility for either science and medicine. And one of the major challenges associated to engineering biology is that quite often um, we are trying to insulate a user-defined objective within the context of the cell's normal operating system. And that's a very challenging task to do because the cell has a limited number of resources and it's evolved to actually use those resources for growth, replication, and survival. And so what we're doing as biological engineers is trying to harness some of those resources towards maybe the production of our own user-defined objective. And there oftentimes is a, is a tug of war that goes on between kind of the cells and, and our user-defined objective. The essence of our efforts are trying to custom design immune responses. And so we're focused mainly on diseases where there's some sort of chronic dysfunction in the immune system and we're trying to either reverse that chronic dysfunction or in some ways build a new function that, that compensates for that. What we're interested in doing is using cell-free biological systems to convert cheap raw materials into valuable products. And some of the products that we're mainly interested in are protein therapeutics. Because we're interested in proteins, we're very much interested in learning how to harness the biological process known as protein synthesis. And another reason why we might just be generally interested in kind of building biological systems is studying the process of how the ribosome is built, self-assembled, and synthesized will hopefully lead to new antibacterial targets against rising bacterial infections. So as we know, a lot of the antibiotics that we use today um, are currently becoming no longer as effective as they once were because bacteria are becoming resistant to them. So if we could understand exactly how a ribosome self-assembles, we would potentially be able to have new targets against bacterial resistance. What makes this approach different from other sort of genetically modified vaccines that people have used before is we're actually building in new input-output relationships. Um, we really try to treat the cell as a, as a device, really, and we're engineering it as a device. I think at the end of the day, the research that's coming out and will continue to come out of the synthetic biology community um, will be something that helps people, and I think that's important.